Hey everyone, Landon McCluskey here bringing you another video tutorial from Zanata Consulting. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through setting up the basics of your Zoho Desk Help Center. If perchance you like what you see in the video today, feel free to like it, share it, and maybe even subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, that button right there. Yeah, that one. Without any further ado, here's the video. Let's check out how to set up our Zoho Desk Help Center. Whether you want something very simple where your customers can submit help tickets, or you want something a bit more elaborate where they can submit those tickets, check on the status of them, see their past tickets, visit your knowledge base, and maybe even communicate with one another through a community. This is how we're gonna get started. In Zoho Desk, under Settings, you'll find Help Center. When you set up your Zoho Desk organization, by default, it starts a help center for you. Your URL is gonna be publicly accessible. Now, if I go to this URL, it's gonna show me what my help center looks like currently. Right now, there's not much to it and can't even submit a ticket. So we need to set it up. Over here on the left-hand side, this is the page where we rebrand it. We can put our company logo, which is gonna show up here, and we can set the favicon which is what shows up in the tab up top. We can change the help center name if we want to. You can actually get your own URL when you map a domain to this. I'm not gonna go through that in depth today, but it is possible so that nobody has to type in demo4zanata.zohodesk.com slash portal slash en slash sign in. You can have it be demo4zanata help or whatever you want it to be. Here in Access Settings is where we can map our custom domain with Zoho Desk so we can change the URL. And we've got permissions, search preferences, and auto invite options. So I'll go through each one of these permissions just because they are very important. First of all, customers can sign up for Help Center. If that's not there, when you go to the Help Center, you're not going to have the option to get into it. If you enable this, it's going to give you a second option called that says moderate customer signups in the help center. So initially, when someone is here, if they have the ability to sign up, they'll click here and they'll add their name and email and they will be signed up and immediately approved. If you have moderate customer signups in the help center checked, then when they apply, you will see them under users and they will have, uh, there's a tab here or once this is enabled, that says pending moderation. They'll show up in here, and if you approve them, then they will be signed up for the Help Center. Customers can view tickets of other users in their account. This just allows anyone that has a sign up for Help Center that's also in your customers under the same account as someone else to view all the tickets of their account, of anyone in their account. Customers must register to access Help Center that means that you're not allowed to send any tickets whatsoever unless you're signed up. So if you have that they can sign up enabled and then you have that you moderate them and you also say that they must register, that means that no one can submit a ticket unless they go to sign up and you've approved them. Display community in the help center. This is another portion of the help center that not a lot of people use but it is there. So you've got your, your tickets and my area shows all your tickets, knowledge base where you can browse those articles and then community. And we'll get into that just a little bit later. We won't get very in depth with it just because we're going through the main setup, but it is a, it is a feature that can be very useful depending on what you need. Back to the settings, defend your help center against cross-site scripting. Most people don't necessarily need this. It's very technical, but if there's nothing that's going to be affected, I would go ahead and check it. Display tickets from private departments in Help Center. This goes back to how you have your help desk set up with different departments. If you have a lot of departments and some of them are private, then you typically by default don't see those tickets inside of the Help Center. If you have multiple departments, then there's another option here, show departments list page, choosing to submit a ticket. So if you have an accounting department and an IT department set up, 
when a customer goes to submit a ticket, they'll have a choice, if this is enabled, to submit an accounting ticket or an IT ticket. If you have the private department set up, we'll allow those to be in that list. Sending an email notification when the user is deactivated. Usually that's a good idea, so they know they've been deactivated, but you can toggle that on or off. Search preferences. This is typically uh, for the knowledge base, section, category, or global. A lot of times uh, section or category are what I see used the most. It really depends on how granular and how divided you have your knowledge base. If you have it divided where there's all these tiny little bits, maybe you only want them to search within the category, but if everything is just one article for each type of thing, you might want it to be a global permission. And then invite customers automatically when they submit their first ticket. This typically means if you had it where customers could sign up, they're not required to register to access the help center. That means they could submit a ticket and then they would automatically, if you have this enabled, automatically receive an email that invites them to access the help center. Next is languages. It's simply the ability to add more languages. So if I say, I also want the portal to be in Arabic, we can have it be there. It makes it a lot more accessible depending on your industry or your use for the help center that may be useful. Customization. And I'm going to come back to this in just a minute. For now, I'm going to very quickly go over a few other items that are more technical. And so if you're used to setting these up, I would recommend it. Um, but I'm not going to get too into detail on this. So user authentication and federated login. First of all, federated login allows you to sign in with different accounts. A lot of websites you go to, they say sign in with Google or sign in with Microsoft or sign in with Facebook. This is where you would go to set those up. Under user authentication, you can of course put the settings in here so that you can use those federated logins to make sure that the authentication with those logins is there. SEO and Google Analytics and PageSense, if you're familiar with those, can go ahead and set them up. I'm not going to go into details about those. Basically, if you want the search engine optimization for your help center, say you have a, a public help center and you want people to be directed there when they ask certain questions, that's really where this is going to come in. Email templates is just the three invitation activation and deactivation templates. When you send your invitation, it's pretty basic and for the most part does the job initially. If you want it to look fancy, if you want different information on here, anything like that, you'll just go ahead and put that here. Under users, we saw this already for pending moderation, but here you see all the users, active, invited, deactivated. So you can invite them directly from here. You just put their email in and send an invite. They'll receive that invitation and they'll come in here. So super cool dude, Bob's your uncle at test.com has been invited, but has not accepted it. It's unfortunate. Seems like a super cool dude. User labels and groups are a little bit different. So user groups are what we can use to apply different knowledge base categories so they can see different categories or sections so that different viewing access is available. So maybe you have different user groups for different levels of employees or for different companies, something like that. User labels is really just a especially if you have the community tab enabled, allows people to see. So you may have super users as a label or community influencer or community contributor, something like that. It really is up to you, but this is less of a permissions based item here or allowing them to do certain things. It really is just how they are seen. It's just a tag on there. So Google analytics, of course, you can get those from when people access your help center where they're coming from, everything like that. And then uh, page sets, similar with page sense there. Sales IQ. So by default, your help center has a chat. So if you have it enabled, then there's gonna be a little chat bubble in your help center and it's defaulted through here. You can create the settings and everything. Or if you use sales IQ for your website, you may want to set up with the sales IQ chat and just replaces the default. So. We'll look at this chat really quick and the advanced settings of it, which funny enough, you set up within sales IQ, but you can replace it with essentially, if you want the same chat bot that you have on your website or something like that, you can replace it 
with sales IQ. So these are pretty easy to set up. There's a tutorial that's specific to these, and there's a lot of uh, information here. And this is mostly for the basic setup of Help Center. So I'm not going to go into detail of it, but yes, there are some good items in here where, especially for the Help Center, specific to it or searching the knowledge base, there may be certain things that people want to know that you could put in there if you have a chatbot, but also it allows them to talk directly with live agents at your company. Lastly here, I want to look at the community settings. In community, you've got your different categories and then preferences for what you have in community. Under categories, we'll open this one up. In your different categories, you can add forums specifically in there, topics within those forums, and then of course comments on that. A very good example of how this can be set up without me explaining it and going through different examples, a very good place that you can check out is actually if you just go to help.zoho.com. You're going to come to their version of the portal. This is their support portal built on Zoho Desk. You've got a landing page that shows some basic ideas here. Then if you go to knowledge base, this is what your knowledge base can look like. Let's just say CRM plus you've got your topics, categories, and then your articles within community. You've got the different items here. Say we want to go to Zoho campaigns. We've got all of these discussions, questions, ideas, problems. This is a very good place to go if you want an example of how your help center could be set up. And it, it's very, very useful feature if you want a good way to interface with your customers and have them allow some self-service items for them. One example here I'm going to go through very quickly, simply a walkthrough of going to the help center, signing up, getting that invitation and going into it and submitting a ticket. So we're going to go ahead and sign up here. And once I put the text in here, really good chance I'm going to get this wrong because I always do. Once I get this correct, hopefully sometime this week, that's going to send me that invite. So I'm going to go grab the invite and accept it. And actually, I forgot that I had approval turned on. So we're going to go into users here, find ourselves um, pending moderation. And we're going to approve this guy. So now he's invited. We can find him under invited here along with the super cool dude. So I'm going to go accept that email. And once I've accepted it, I'll come back to the help desk and sign in. This is what it currently looks like. We've got our knowledge base, community, and tickets. So let's go ahead and click to find our tickets under my area. We'll go ahead and add a ticket here. It's for the account that we're part of tests for subject description and then additional we're going to say it's high priority most of the time you don't want your user to be able to say what priority it is you want to do that um, internally so we'll submit it and now we can actually see that right here we can click into it and find what the content was we can also reply before we get a response from the company, can chat about the ticket. Of course, we can print off where it is. If we go to my area one more time, it pulls it right here and it'll have a list of our tickets. Knowledge base. We don't have any knowledge base articles in here, but this is where they'll be. Community. This is the basics of discussion announcement, question, idea, problem. Like I said, if you go to help.soho.com, there's very good examples. It's very well built out and very extensive. So I would recommend checking that out. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time.